Good morning and welcome to St Mary's uh, morning prayer. I hope you can all hear me now and I hope everybody's uh, looking good this morning and everybody's in uh, fine fettle on this fairly uh, miserable morning. And so here we are once more in the Isle of Wedmore. If you're just uh, pouring yourself a cup of coffee or just taking a break from those early chores, it's good to see you. And thanks for joining me. If you're watching later and if you want to put something in the uh, comment box, that would be great. And uh, I'll include those in my prayers a little bit later. Now, I think probably Sam and Richard has been saying these mornings during this week are very special. Uh, for the 18th of December, we will be uh, celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for each day, the church has special set words which are said. These words all remembering the names given to God through the Old Testament. Each name develops into a prophecy of the forthcoming and eagerly anticipated Messiah. Today we remember God as O, o Adonai. So let's remember God as O Adonai. The second of the great O Advent antiphons, O Adonai, touches on the ancient title of God Himself. It was called Adonai, meaning Lord, in the Old Testament because of His sacred name, the four letters known as the Tetragrammaton, could not be uttered by unworthy human beings without blasphemy. But the Advent hope, indeed the Advent miracle, was that this unknowable, unable, utterly holy Lord chose out of his own free will and out of love for us to become known, to bear a name and to meet us where we are. The Antiphon prayer reflects on the mysterious and awesome manifestations of God to Moses. On the mountain and the sign of the burning bush. For early Christians this bush full of the fire of God's presence yet still itself and unconsumed was a sign of the Lord Christ who would come who would be fully God and yet also fully human. So, as I light our candle to sing, signal the beginning of morning prayer, let's have a moment of silence and reflection. And uh, good morning to Mary. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we may behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the Lord may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed. The day lies open before us. Let's pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. 
Now we'll uh, turn to our Psalm of the Week, which is number 76. And we will uh, start in the first verse and reading through to the end. In Judah, God is known. His name is great in Israel. At Salem is his tabernacle, and his dwelling place is Zion. There broke he the flashing arrows of the bow, the shield, the sword, and the weapons of war. In the light of splendour you appeared, glorious from the eternal mountains. <clears throat> the boastful were plundered. They have slept their sleep. None of the warriors can lift their hand. At your rebuke, O God of Jacob, both horse and chariot fell stunned. Terrible are you in majesty, who can stand before your face when you are angry. You caused your judgment to be heard from heaven. The earth trembled and was still. When God rose to judgment to save all the meek upon earth. You crashed the wrath of the peoples and bridled the wrathful remnant. Make a vow to the Lord your God and keep it. Let all who are around you about him bring gifts to him that is worthy to be feared. He breaks down the spirit of princes and strikes terror in the kings of the earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. <clears throat> the reading today comes from Thessalonians 2, chapter 3. As for other matters, brothers and sisters, pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honoured, just as it was with you. And pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil people, for not everyone has faith. But the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing, and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we command you, brothers and sisters, to keep away from every believer who is idle and disruptive and does not live according to the teaching. You receive from us, for you yourselves know how you ought to follow our example. We were not idle when we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's food without paying for it. On the contrary, we worked night and day, labouring and toiling, so that we would not be a burden to any of you. We did this, not because we do not have the right to such help, but in order to offer ourselves as a model for you, to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this rule. The one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. We hear that some among you are idle and disruptive. They are not busy, they are busy bodies. Such people we command and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to settle down and earn the food they eat. And as for you, brothers and sisters, never tire of doing what is good. Take special note of anyone who do, does not obey our instruction in this letter. Do not associate with them in order that they may feel ashamed. Yet do not regard them as an enemy, but warn them as you would a fellow believer. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you the peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with all of you. I, Paul, write this greeting in my own hand, which is the distinguishing mark in all my letters. This is how I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. This is the word of the Lord. Now in this chapter, Paul is praising the Theolosian, Theolosian believers for their spiritual maturity and perseverance. And he, he's encouraging them to grow further in the view of that Christ's return is imminent. Now, Paul and Silas and Timothy came to Thessalonia 
on Paul's second missionary journey. Paul stayed there was brief, at most only a few months. From there he went to Berra, on to Athens, and then to Corinth. From Athens, Paul sent Timothy to encourage the Thessalonians, and when Timoth Timothy returned to him at Corinth, the apostle was overjoyed at the news of the strong faith of the Thessalonians. From Corinth, he wrote the first Thessalonian letter in late AD 50 or early 51. First Thessalonians is one of the earliest of Paul's letters, and thus only one of the first books in the New Testament to be written. The study Bible says Paul not had time in Thessalonica to instruct his converts as thoroughly as he would like. like thus in this letter he wanted to express his joy at their steadfastness, encourage them in the midst of suffering, and make them a bit more clear about the, when the Lord will return and how. So let us pray, but first have a moment of silence as we offer these prayers to God for our families and the world around us and all those that the Holy Spirit drop into their hearts at the start of the new day. In this uh, third week of Advent, that is the joy that Jesus brings to all of us. So in this third week, let us remember the good news of Jesus' birth has the power to bring us great joy this Christmas season. And our joy isn't dependent on what is going on in our life, in our world, or the people that we are with. It doesn't depend on the gift we give or the gifts we receive. No earthly things can ever give us complete joy. Our com joy comes from you, dear Lord. That joy that flooded the hearts of the shepherds, the angels and the wise men, the hosts of heaven, and Mary and Joseph is the joy that still has the power to overwhelm our hearts with rejoicing. Father, you offer that same joy to us now, if we know you, and recognise Jesus, our Saviour and Lord. You gave us a reason to celebrate when you gave us the unspeakable gift of Jesus Christ. You came to dwell among us. You went to Calvary's cross for us. You overcame death and rose from the dead for us. You forgive our sins and give us eternal life when we believe in you. Our joy doesn't come from our jobs, our family, our relationships, our finances or our success. Our joy doesn't come from what we have on earth or who we are with. Our joy is a gift. It is the gift you gave us that first Christmas in Jesus Christ. Our joy is encompassed in our Saviour, King Jesus. Flood our heart with joy this Advent season as we reflect on the good news of Jesus' birth. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. On this Friday, we think of all those involved in the justice system, not just here in our own country, but across the world. The governments who set the laws to guide and help people, the judges, the solicitors, the lawyers, and the juries. But we must also think of the people in prison and how they are suffering, and also for their victims. Please bring peace and joy to all of them and guide them in your true way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now we think of the continued work of the PM PMC working group identifying the lonely, the isolated, and how we best as a church can help these people, even if it's just by a short phone call or a package left for them on the door. And as they start looking at this good neighbour scheme, just give them the strength to continue that you, dear Lord, will guide them in their work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we bring to you, dear Lord, the, all the workers in the NHS and all the health services across the world who are striving on a daily basis to um, roll out this vaccine to all of us, no matter where we are or who we are. 
and that they may do it in a fair and even way, and that all governments work together to get this delivered. Especially in our old community, we think across the, the Cheddar Valley and down to Burnham and Weston, all the doctors and nurses rolling out the vaccine there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember our prayers this morning, all our friends and families across the benefice and those on the edge of our churches. Help us to bring them into your loving family and help all of us grow in love and faith for you, dear Lord. And it is very busy season of Christmas. We bring you, dear Lord, our own Vicar Richard and Sam and Mike and the other lay leaders. Just give them the strength to carry on for this wonderful season. We also bring to you, Christ Jesus, all those who are sick and suffering at this time. Those in our prayer list and those known only to ourselves. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the collect of the day. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare the way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, that at your second coming to judge the world we may be found acceptable people in your sight. For you are alive and reign with the Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your Son. Just give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and suffer for the cause of the right. Of right. With Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Awaiting his coming in glory, let us play with con pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, well, that brings it to our uh, end of our time together today. Apologies for the slight hiccup at the beginning and apologies if there was any noise in the background, but uh, I'm sitting in the conservatory, so it might have been a bit um, noisy with the rain lashing down on top of the uh, conservatory. But I hope this is all going to find you well. And uh, Richard and Sam will be taking you all the way through the new year. So I'll be back doing this in January. And if you need any more information, the newsletter is coming out in the next 24 hours. And there's also information on our website about the uh, Christmas services. And just a little reminder to make sure you, uh, if you're coming to St Mary's, to make sure you... Uh, book in your seat so basically it's just uh, left for me to wish you a very happy Christmas and a new year which is going to be full of hope and it's going to be a good year and may our Lord shower you with all his blessings and have a fabulous Christmas thank you <laughs>